Five again. So again, concourse standard, we're going to be looking at the law of science. Hey, and what do you know? I was such a nice guy. I want to see how nice I was. I wrote the formulas down for you, right? Here's your triangle. Here it is. Here it is. Look at that. One half adjacent one, adjacent two times the sine of theta, okay? And there's our triangle, okay? Now, there is no hypotenuse, right? But there are adjacents and opposites, but no hypotenuse because it's not a right triangle. So let's do example one, okay? Here we do. So example one, find the area of this triangle. So here's my angle, right? Both these two sides are next to that. These are the adjacent sides. Does that make sense? That's my adjacent, and that's my adjacent. This would be my opposite side, but we don't care about it. In this problem, we don't care about the opposite side, but that would be the opposite side. Everything starts at the angle, right? Everything begins at the angle. You go to your angle. So I'm just going to go area equals. Let's use the formula. It's going to be 1 half times adjacent 1. How about 12? Times adjacent 2. How about 8? Times the sine of 100. That's it. And again, adjacent one, adjacent two, you can switch these around. It doesn't matter which one you call first. It's, you know, they're both adjacent. So then I'm just going to use my calculator and go 0 0.5 times 12 times 8 times the sine of 100. 47.3. Easy, right? You guys agree? Easy? 47.3 centimeters squared, okay? Everybody thumbs up? Two thumbs up? Super easy, isn't it? I mean, it's... It's, it's easier than doing that stuff, okay? Okay, now, example two. So when I look at the pentagon, what I know about the pentagon is there's really going to be five triangles. You agree? You guys agree? I see five triangles. So if I can find the area of one of the triangles, how about that triangle right there, right? God bless you. So if I can find the area of that triangle, then I can just multiply the answer by five, right? So let me superimpose my one triangle up here so I get room to work. So I'm going to superimpose my triangle over here. I know this is 10. This is 10, right? But I need to know the central angle. Okay, I need to know this angle here. And I happen to know it. You know why I know that? If I go 360 degrees all the way around, I can divide that by my five central angles. I get 72 degrees. Hey, right? So do I have adjacent, adjacent in the angle? I do. I've got two adjacent sides in the angle, right? So let's use this formula right now. So I'm going to go, okay, area. It's going to equal 1 half times 10 times 10 times the sine of 72, right? I'm just going to use my calculator. Okay, let's just let the calculator do the work, right? Calculator, do the work for me. 0. 0.5 times 10 times 10 times the sine of 72. Boom. About 47.55, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the area of one triangle. That equals a 47.55. But, but, but we know there's five triangles in the right. So I'm going to go for the pentagon. We'll have five times my 47.55, because that makes five of the triangles, right? Times that by five. And I get an answer of 237.76 centimeters squared. Two thumbs up. Does that seem pretty easy? I like trig. I really do. I know I'm a weirdo anyway, but I like trig because if I can draw a picture and I can see it, I do much better. I'm a visual person, okay? I would love to give you 20 seconds, absolutely, to get caught up. Does this seem pretty easy? Okay. Ashley, pretty easy? Good. Okay. Bailey, pretty easy? Good. All right. Okay, you ready? Now, here's the key. Law of science. Solve the triangle. We're not finding the area. We're not finding the area, but we got to find it. So first of all, what I do is first... Find a pair of opposites. OK? 
Okay, you gotta find a pair of opposites. So, check it out. I have, I have a pair of opposites. You guys see it? I've got an angle and it's opposite. You have to have, you see how those are opposites? Angle, opposite side, right? You have to, you cannot use this formula unless you have a pair of opposites, okay? So I have a pair of opposites. I've got the angle and the five. You see how those are opposites? So I've got angle D, which means I can, I can find its opposite, right? So you're looking for opposites. I got opposite, opposite, angle, opposite side. I've got angle, I could find its opposite side. So, law of sines. I've got to find a side, right? Go to my notes. Law of sines, finding this side. I go up one over sine of theta one equals up two over sine of theta two. And I always like to write the unknown first. So what I want to do is find opposite, opposite, opposite. So I'm going to go D over the sine of 74 equals equals my 5 over the sine of 38. Okay, so it's, I've got side over the sine of its opposite angle equals side over the sine of its opposite angle. See, I did that. Now I'm just going to cross multiply. So we're not really cross multiply. I'm just going to multiply this up here, bring the whole thing up. Because that would give me D by itself. Does that make sense? I'll just bring it up. So I'd have D is equal to 5 times the sine of 74 over the sine of 38. And I'm just going to use my calculator, right? If I don't break it. Oh, I did break it. How do you like that? Okay, I'll get it later. I'm recording. Okay. So I'm just going to use my calculator and go 5 times the sine of 74, close the parentheses, divided by sine of 38, close the parentheses, and I get an answer about 7.8. And that answer makes sense, 7.8. So D is approximately equal to 7.8, and we'll say centimeters, okay? Pretty easy, right? It's just opposites. Opposite side over the sine of its opposite angle equals opposite side equals the sine of it, okay? Now, if we need to solve this, then if I put in my 7.8 here, okay, and I need to finish up this triangle, then probably the next thing I would find is angle E. You guys agree with that? Angle E be easy. So let's find angle E. I know there's 180 degrees in every triangle, right? So I go 180 minus 38 plus 74, right? That give me angle E, right? So if I do that in my calculator and do my 180 minus 38 plus 74, I get 68. So angle E is 68 degrees. So I'm going to put that in my, my um, triangle now. So put my 68 right here. How am I doing? I'm doing okay. Now the last thing I can do is find little e. And again, I've got opposites. You see my opposites? So I can go little e, see my opposites? I can do my opposites. So I'm going to say, okay, opposites. Let's go. And I want to find a side. So if I want to find the side, I'm going to go opposite 1 over the sine of its angle, opposite 2 over the sine of its angle. Always write the unknown first. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go straight to, I'm going to go little e, which is side little e over the sine of its opposite angle, which is 68, okay? Over the sine of 68 equals 5 over the sine of 38, okay? So I've got side over the sine of its opposite angle equals side over the sine of its opposite angle, okay? I've got side over its opposite angle equals side over its opposite angle, okay? And then I'm just going to cross multiply, or I'm just going to multiply this straight up to here, okay? Makes it easy to solve. So little e is equal to 5 times the sine of 68 over the sine of 38, okay? And again, just use my tracer as a calculator, right? All right, clear. 5 times sine of 68, close the parentheses, divided by sine. 38 close parentheses, and I get about, well, about 7.5, maybe. So the lee is about 7.5, okay? All right, thumbs up. So it all has to do the opposites. You need just a set of opposites, and you can do this, okay? You agree it's easier than yeah. sine, cosine, tangent? Super easy. You guys agree? Okay.
right turn the page. Now, this is the missing angle. So it's still the exact same formula. See that? Except for it's upside down, right? It's the exact same formula except for it's upside down. That's the only difference. It's upside down. The reason it's upside down is because it makes it easier to solve. But I do know I'm finding an angle. So the very last step we're going to do is assign inverse, right? Because we've got to find an angle. So let's set it up. So first of all, find a pair of opposites, okay? So find a pair of opposites. All right, well, how about 43 and 22? Yeah, yeah, we got that, right? You guys agree? Got my opposites, right? And then I see this 20, which means I should be able to find E, right? All has to do with the opposite. So what I'm going to do is try and find angle E. So my notes say to put the sine of the angle on top. So now I like to put my unknown first. So I'm going to go sine of E, sine of angle E, right? So that's me. Over 20 equals the sine of 43 over 22. How am I doing? It's a sine of an angle over its opposite side equals sine of an angle over its opposite side, okay? Okay, I'm going to cross multiply, so let's bring the 20 up to here. Okay, let's bring 20, multiply the 20 up, okay? Because I multiply both sides by 20, and I'll have sine of E equals 20 times the sine of 43 over 22, okay? Yes. So real quick, let me finish this up, and then you can, okay? So, unless it's an emergency, emergency. So, I'm then going to go 20 times the sine of 43, close your parentheses, close your parentheses, divided by 22, and I get a decimal. That can't be angle E. That cannot. That is not angle E. What do we got to do? We've got to find an angle. That is not, you guys agree, there's no way that's an angle. But what do we do? Yes, but we're looking for an angle, so what do we got to do? What do we got to do? So we got to do the sine inverse of that decimal, that 0.6. One nine 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 eight blah 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 blah. Or I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna go second sine inverse of my answer. And I like the answer button because they don't have to type that decimal over again, right? I mean that answer. You know, you guys know where the answer button is, right down there. And then if I hit enter, I get about a 38.3 degree angle. Now that seems reasonable, right? So angle E is approximately equal to 38.3 degrees. Okay, how am I doing? So far, so good? Okay, now let's finish this up. So I know if angle E is 38.3, what would you find next? You can find angle T by adding T. Yeah, you guys agree? So, so let's go 180. Let's just go angle T is equal to, you guys agree, 180, because all three angles add up to 180. So this is not that hard. Minus parentheses, my 43 plus my 38.3, right? Because I know all three of them add up to 180. So I'll go 180 minus parentheses, 43 plus 38.3, and I get an answer of about 98.7. So angle T is about 98.7 degrees, 98.7, okay? And then the last thing I can find is little t. Now, there is no Pythagorean's Theorem. I'll say it again. Don't do Pythagorean's Theorem because it's not a right triangle. But what we can do is set up our opposites. Do you have to go badly? Go. Yes. Set up your opposites, okay? Badly. Set up your opposite. Okay, do not use, again, you cannot use, cannot, cannot, cannot use Pythagorean's Theorem because it's not a right triangle. So we have to do it using an opposite. So I'm going to go ahead and use... These notes, right? If I miss a side, I'm going to do these notes right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go T over the sine of 98.7 equals 22 over the sine of 43. So everything has to do with opposites, doesn't it? Side, opposite angle, side, opposite angle. Almost done. Multiply this up here going to have t is equal to 22 times the sine of 98.7 divided 
divided by the sine of 43. And I'm going to use a calculator, right? I'm just going to go. And I don't need an inverse button because I don't need an angle. 22 times sine 98.7. Close the parentheses. Divided by sine of 43. And I get about 31.9. Approximately 31.9 centimeters. Okay, that's it. So, homework. Page 962, 1 to 9 all, 24, 49, and 52, okay? So, draw the picture, show the work. Draw the picture, show the work. Draw the picture, show the work, okay?